Hello and welcome to Dialogue. I'm Yang Rui in Chongqing. Today, I'm very pleased to be joined by Gabriela Zimmer, member of the European Parliament from Germany and chair of the Confederal Group of the European United Left and Nordic Green Left. We shall also be looking at pressing issues currently facing Germany and Europe as a whole and how relations with China may be of benefit in dealing with the challenges in a range of areas. But before we get started, let's take a look at this. Gabriela Zimmer is a German socialist politician who was born in Berlin in 1955. She has been a member of the East German Communist Party and the Socialist Unity Party of Germany, the SED, and its successors continuously since 1981. Between 2000 and 2003, she was chair of the German Party of Democratic Socialism, which merged with others to form Die Linke, or the Left, in 2007. She has been a member of the European Parliament since 2004 in the Confederal Group of the European United Left, Nordic Green Left. She was elected chair of the group in March 2012. Ms. Zimmer works for fundamental social rights and standards such as a minimum income, a minimum wage, the right to decent housing and energy provision. Her main political concerns are the fight against hunger, poverty and social exclusion both within and outside the EU. Welcome to Dialogue, Madam. Both the SDP and the CDU, the largest parties, received their lowest ever levels of support in the recent elections. The right-wing AFD alternative for Deutschland party got its highest, just over 14 percent, but smaller left-wing parties also saw gains here, unlike the rest of the country. How do you interpret the combination of these forces? The outcome of the two last regional elections in, in Germany this year um, were very um, bad for democracy in my mind, because um, AFD, you uh, mentioned it before, got a lot of uh, votes, and one reason is but the um, part, I would like to say, might be 20% of the population have the feeling that they are excluded from democratic participation and that they fear to, to lose something from their living standard, uh, also in, as a consequence of the migration issue. But the main thing is that especially the leading parties, the Great Coalition, uh, gave people the feeling that they are not willing, not able, to solve these problems of the daily life people have. And that's why um, it was more a vote against CDU, SPD, as a vote for AFD. A lot of people used AFD saying, we uh, would like to give you a signal that we not accept what you are doing as political elites. Is it something common for European leaders to face the same problem of uh, the ultra-right movement emerging larger than they have expected and what do you think of the impact as a result? But, um, the migration issue was uh, the signal to, for, for some of the right-wing and extremist parties to say okay you see what is going on when these parties, these ruling parties are uh, in, in power, they don't care about you, they only care about people coming from other regions, from other countries, and we, uh, we fear that we have to pay for it. And uh, this created an atmosphere that all the other things, people are frustrated from development of the last 10, 50 years. Uh, it uh, concerns uh, privatization of public goods, uh, of public services, that we have not in all member states uh, minimum wages on a level that people can, can uh, live from these wages. That this feared an, an atmosphere that people were saying, okay, the right wing, they gave us an alternative. And now we, we as a left, as democratic uh, groups, left groups, we have to do and to say, okay, we are also able to, to show you an alternative, a democratic alternative the alternative of solidarity between all of us and not to exclude people from other regions and to say only we are the main people and all the other things are not interesting for us. Earlier you said results of the regional elections in Germany have damaged democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us the differences, if any, between populism and democracy in European politics? 
Oh yeah, populism, uh, you have to say it's not more populism, it's right-wing populism. Um, because popular policy is not bad as a thing as well. But po right-wing populism is very damaging a democracy because the people or cis uh, forces are saying, we will not accept what democratically elected party or members of parliament are saying and doing. We are only going on the street and crying, uh, you lost our trust and we, uh, you have to do what we want. But not saying in which direction, not saying concrete alternatives, not saying truths about uh, the real situation. And this is damaging because people, some of the people, think, okay, we are excluded from all of them, let's believe in that what they're doing. It's so easy. They, they tell us the world is existing in black and white. We have, we have seen white and now we want to have black. And this is not possible. You have to, to also to, to give information to the people. You have to give some possibility that they are also able to participate and not to be misused, that they are able to decide themselves, that they get information and that they are also willing to learn. And about this, uh, I think uh, that a lot of people lost, um, lost their trust, in, um, especially in the parliamentarian democracy in the Western. How harmful were the results of the regional elections for the political future of uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel herself? I, I think the results, especially in September, opened the eyes also for the ruling political parties. And it depends from themselves. If Merkel um, and also CDU, CSU, the other two, two parties from the conservative side, um, learn that they not have to follow the AFD to, to get back win, uh, voters from, from the AFD, but that they have to, more to, to, more, to make more transparent their policy, to explain more, and also to change, change in a way that solidarity will come back as a main element of uh, German policy. I think then it's able to, to win back uh, voters and in the moment we can't say what will be the result of the uh, and, and the outcome next year. We have uh, one year time. It's time enough to, to change policy, to react and not to say okay uh, AFD and others are uh, demanding stop of migration and we will do so. This would um, not strengthen the power of Merkel. Merkel says TTIP is in Europe's interest, but the France Trade Minister says those uh, multilateral negotiations uh, should be halted. Um, now, uh, François Michel Hollande says uh, that his country would not support any agreement before the end of U.S. President Barack Obama's uh, final term of office. Uh, does this indicate a major disagreement between the two most influential members of the European Union in continental Europe? Um, you have to see that uh, since two years, a lot of people are going on the streets and demonstrate and manifest uh, their position, protest against TTIP, um, because they see TTIP is this free trade agreement with uh, the U United States as an agreement uh, what could cut social and consumer rights and also democratic rights participation of the parliament, parliaments and so on. And the protest developed. The protest started in, in the Netherlands and in Germany, then also in France and in Belgium. And I think no one uh, from the heads of uh, governments is, uh, would be uh, well advised to um, not to recognize what is the demand by the people. They are not against trade. They are not against fair trade, but they are for negotiation also with the United States, which accepts the standards, social standards, and also environmental democratic standards in, in, in Germany and in, in the European Union, uh, in the member states as well. That they have to do. When we look at the relationship between European Union and China, why do you think uh, economic embargo has not been lifted against China? Uh, do you see any apparent increase of a trade protectionism because uh, uh, China is not accepted as a full-fledged market economic status and therefore a third economy is likely to be cited to judge whether uh, anti-dumping investigations uh, should be made by the European Union in some of the extreme cases. Uh, 
What do you think of the current uh, relationship? And um, do you think uh, with the failure, the alleged failure of uh, TTIP negotiations, uh, European Union is ready to get closer to China? Interesting uh, question. Um, I would like to say you have, uh, first of all, to, to see the orientation and uh, also the strategy by the European Union of the last years. Look to, uh, to the treaty, there is written down and the strategy till 2020, European Union says, we want to win the global competitiveness. We want to be the first one. And if you want to be this, uh, of course, you have also a, a behavior, an attitude of uh, power. Um, you think you can be the first one and then you look, uh, if we have, uh, if we are able to conclude or to, to decide about TTIP with the United States, of course, this will be an action also excluding China. If you see that um, there are also a thinking inside um, the leadership, the political elites inside the European Union and economical uh, elites, that means economic and financial growth can be reached uh, in a way that you cut social um, budgets, that you cut social services, that you privatize and so on, then you see that there is a behavior what is not in another way and not accepting uh, the Chinese way. In China, in China we have a communist party, communist party is saying okay, we will watch the development, the economic development and uh, we will ensure that the benefit of economic growth will, uh, will be for the people. This is not the first thinking in, in Europe. Um, we as a left group and others, the Greens and also parts of Social Democrats and, and so on, we think we have to change this kind of uh, strategy thinking inside the European Union. We don't need any uh, power structures in, in the world. We have to, to build up um, a fair world, a, a world of solidarity and also fairness and uh, where we respect also the different interests the nations have and also the different regions in the world have. And this is one of the main things behind uh, these contradictions also inside the European Parliament where the majority that, oh, we have a problem to, uh, to, to support that China will get the market access status. And I think this is not the right behavior. Thank you very much. You are watching Dialogue with uh, Gabriela Zimmer, member of the European Parliament from Germany and chair of the Confederate Group of the European United Left and Nordic Green Left. We are discussing domestic politics of Germany as a result of the refugee crisis as well as the relationship between the European Union and China. Please stay tuned. We'll be back after this break. Welcome back. To some prospect of an European Union without the UK seems a great opportunity. Let's look at the issue of a Brexit and its impact upon the future of the European Union. But others may be dismayed at losing a shield when it comes to EU policies or tendencies with which they also disagree and let Britain take the lead in objecting to, first of all, immigration and free movement of people, a European military force. How are those differences beginning to play out? Uh, it's clear uh, the majority of the British voters decided for a Brexit. But nothing is cleared now. Um, and if you see that Theresa May, the, uh, the, the Chancellor of, um, um, of UK, is saying, OK, we will, we will work for a hard Brexit. That means we will do it in a way that we, we are only looking for our interest at, uh, at UK. Uh, then you can see that the reaction of the 27 members of the, um, of, uh, the European Union is also very strong, saying, OK, you decided to go out, then you have to go out. Please, we are waiting that you officially announce now your, um, that you will leave the European Union. From this moment, if the, if the British government is doing so, from this moment we have two years' time for negotiate. And there is one common position between all the member states. 
Um, it was discussed also in Bratislava during the last uh, European uh, summit, unofficial summit. And the United Kingdom was not invited despite no, the run-up. Yeah, to because the it was an unofficial. It European was an Union. unofficial summit saying, okay, you uh, you had the Brexit. You are saying uh, you will. Uh, you will implement the Brexit. Uh, now what we was have the underlying purpose of this meeting in Bratislava? Uh, this was to say uh, the same thing. We are waiting till you till the moment you will announce exactly when you will go out. Then we will negotiate, and we will not allow you the access to the internal market without accepting the fundamental um, freedoms of the European Union which are the main values in, in, um, based in, in the treaties. And one of this is the free movement of workers. And this is one of the reasons UK voted for a Brexit, to, uh, in the migration issue and also not to allow Polish workers and workers from Lettland, from the Baltic, Balticum to, to go to UK and to work there. Um, this is one of the positions. And then this situation now is used by the Commission, by uh, Mr. Juncker and other things. Okay, in, in the past it was UK blocking a military union. Now we are using this opportunity to build up a stronger military union, stronger cooperation and also to bring together military resources in the, Euro in the European Union and also to create a military headquarter in Brussels directly. My group, uh, we as a left, we are opposing against this because we are saying the future of the European Union is not a military union. What we need is more a social democratic union, not a military union. But I think, think they will use this possibility to not to, to replace the NATO, but to play a bigger role uh, as a European Union in a way as a um, military force or so. And that's not good. Next year, Germany will host G20. I wonder if you follow the preparations and the hosting of G20 in Hangzhou, Zhejiang province, uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, do you think you're going to do much the same? I mean, with the, the, the fanfare of the media and a very impressive uh, gala to entertain the participants of the G20. Uh, first of all, your, your understanding of the agenda and declaration mm -hmm. of the uh, uh, goals that need to be achieved uh, through joint efforts of the G20? I think um, it was uh, a great success for China organizing G20 um, and uh, the result, uh, results were important also to, to for, for China and other BRICS states to say we have to, uh, to work together for economic growth and together for uh, also for a peaceful world. We have a lot of conflicts and I think uh, the G20 summit next year in Germany will uh, also reflect the current conflicts in the world. Uh, might be that uh, Chancellor Merkel is saying okay we have to, to look at our role as a global actor. We have also to play our mediate, mediate role between uh, Russia and the United States, uh, looking to the conflicts in the world as in Syria and in, in other regions in the world. Um, I think she will do so, Merkel. She will prepare it in, in, sit, in such direction, but looking to the tradition in Germany and in other uh, European member states, organizing such big meetings, this will not, not work without participation and also public uh, discussions uh, by grassroots movements, by uh, uh, trade unions, political parties, by opposition. I'm, I'm sure um, in Germany the G20 summit will, um, will organize um, well uh, protected from the public. And um, this is a problem. If you will show that uh, 20 states, states of the world, heads of the 20 important states of the world are discussing together global problems, uh, then you have also to guarantee transparency. And then you have also to hear what people on the streets are saying, what they're demanding from, from this summit. You know, Russia had been kicked out of the G8 club because of the Ukrainian crisis and the takeover of uh, Crimea. But many Germans uh, may 
feel even from the days of Bismarck that you are too close to Russia and too far away from God? I, I think, um, yes, we have to, to see what is going on in, in Russia. And there are a lot of political problems. And um, for us as, as leftists, it's uh, not so easy because on the one side we would like to say, or we, ha we, we will say, uh, also Russian can't play only a role as a global player in a, in a way to, to think uh, that, uh, that the war is, a, um, is an instrument of policy. Uh, this is the thinking of the last century. Mm -hmm. So the has, uh, Russians have also to learn, I think so. On the other way, I am, and also a lot of members of my party, of other left parties, and, and I think also looking to social democrats, they are against this kind of way, this kind of behavior to exclude Russia. You can't exclude Russia uh, and say, we will do all the things without you. And we will see it, it's not possible. And that's why I think uh, this kind of sanctions and not respecting also that Putin is elected by, by the population and that he has a great support. You can't say we will go back to the Cold War. And you can't say, okay, uh, in the United States, they, they think so they can explain once more Russia would, uh, should be uh, the empire of, of evil. Not, this is not the right way. We have also to, to see we are in the 21st century and we have also to find, uh, to find a way uh, of, dip, of, of a diplomatic way, cooperation between uh, members of parliaments and uh, we, we need a exchange of culture, of meeting with people. That is the only way to, to, to live in, yeah, in fair and solidarity, in fair way together. Some observers of uh, foreign policy on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean pointed out after the Arab Spring that whenever the West stepped in to intervene, you're going to wreak havoc with the local economy and the well-being of the people. And therefore, you'll see the dramatic rise in the number of refugees that has impacted negatively uh, the politics in Germany and indeed perhaps the future of the Schengen Agreement because uh, uh, leaders of Central and Eastern European countries uh, threatened to close the traditional borders and refuse to accept a single Muslim from the Arab world. Do you think this will be a serious blow to what you hold so dear? namely democracy. Democracy means inclusive and to reach out to the needy and the disadvantaged social groups. I, I think the, a lot of people didn't forget that the intervention, military intervention, intervention especially in Libya uh, and in Iraq were the reason and were the base for the uh, later development and also for destroying uh, social structures, state structures, and also to, to keep the balance between the different regions. And of course, one of the consequences are the growing number of refugees. That's why I think the, the whole attitude, the whole um, policy made by Merkel, and not only by Merkel, we have also to, to look to France, we have also to look to, to other countries, we have also to, to, to look to UK, to London, what they did. Um, this whole policy uh, changed the balance um, in the world. After the, f um, after the failing of uh, the Berlin Wall, we all thought, okay, now it will be easier it will be easier to, to go to new structures, new fair and uh, solidarity structures in the world. But now we have seen that the NATO replaced um, the Warsaw Vertrag, the Soviet army. Uh, we have now NATO till the frontier of, uh, of Russia. This is a very strong change we have now in the global balances. And then all these developments in, in the Middle East, um, people said, oh no, we, we don't know. We don't want to, to have this kind of intervention. We, we 
would like to support them to build up economy to uh, sustainable development. Um, this was a way. And then, when the crisis was the, the refugee, refugee crisis because of Syria uh, started, and um, there were a lot of refugees in, in Jordan, in, 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 Jordan in, in Turkey, uh, it was clear Europe is in the middle now in, of the center uh, of the crisis. The refugees are coming now to Europe, to Greece, to Italy. Do you predict more refugees uh, will, coming, will be coming from Turkey and enter into the European Union because of the recent development between Istanbul and Brussels? Uh, uh, President Erdogan accused European leaders of not informing him in time of the plot, the coup attempt. And he also accused the United States of uh, conspiring with uh, some of the supporters of Gulen, leader, uh, the alleged leader of the uh, coup attempt. Uh, do you think the uh, relationship between Turkey and the West is declining sharply, and that will seriously uh, 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 impact the current Istanbul process regarding the future of refugees? Yes, of course, but I think you have not only to, to look to the migrants or refugees from Syria or, or from Ethiopia or uh, other states uh, from Africa. You have also but to look to... But do you buy the idea that the European Union uh, uh, some of the European leaders didn't know beforehand uh, the uh, coup conspiracy? No. No? No. Absolutely no. no. I, I think so. I have no information that anyone was informed before. I think this is one of the nightmares by by Erdogan, uh, and I'm not sure if uh, what was going on uh, in, in this moment in, in, the, in the Turkish Republic, uh, but our problems uh, in the relation between EU and Turkey are longer mm -hmm. than before. You know, we are negotiating for years uh, if Turkey will, uh, can join the European Union, and uh, this is now also blocked because of the policy inside Turkey. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Thank you too. Thanks a lot.